I'm still seeing what I'm pro projecting. Let me go back to this. So hopefully you can actually see this device now. So if we look at the gate region on the bottom, where would we actually put that step? If we're putting it where we actually jumped into, uh, you see you're on the gate, uh, and we don't have a uniform transmission line coming up to it. It's not going out to a uniform transmission line. So a lot of the val validity of the T has been, um, it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, the, the way the kit set up the area pin on the gate allows me to connect to the side. Uh, if I wanted to, to, if I was more concerned about that, um, given that region, I would have to use some experience and just say, okay, in that case, I'm probably going to add just a little bit of series inductance coming off the gate uh, to do sort of an artificial model of that T. The, the, the T doesn't really apply to that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, here, here's a passive modeling question, um, and this might go to either you, Michael, or maybe Ken. Um, how about spiral inductors and fringe capacitor modeling? Do you support that? Uh, yes, we do. Um, Again, there was only so much we could put in this presentation today, but uh, uh, Triquin has uh, done some uh, very good verification of the momentum stack up for uh, for passive circuit modeling. And I would think, Ken, they would be able to get in contact with you guys for some of that. Uh, yeah, I mean, you go in and uh, you use like a, a thin film uh, for the capacitor, and also, of course, we have resistor type models in there too. And uh, you have the full stack up for the uh, for the spiral inductor. Although you realize, of course, this is an air bridge type process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, this is a design question, uh, and it, it goes: if if I wanted to apply this feedback to an LNA for better stability, what is the projected degradations in noise figure? Um. That's a good question. I would have to go look at it. I, I, I don't know offhand. Okay. Fair enough. Um, while we cascade multiple stages of amplifiers, interaction between stages may occur. This interaction sometimes may bring down the whole performance of the system. How to effectively reduce the interaction between different stages? So I mentioned this, and unfortunately, with, with only so much uh, time, and uh, we were trying to minimize the amount of sort of just product stuff we were putting in here, um, I mentioned something called test labs. And within test labs, if you're looking at the amplifier itself, what we're able to do is put each individual stage in its own circuit or schematic. And then we're able to cascade those together. So what we're doing is we're looking at the input and the output while we're looking at interactions between each individual stages. So your, your data display would be showing you matches, uh, gains, uh, everything interstage as well as the overall amplifier at the same time. And you're right, often you can see some, um, you know, backing off uh, the amount of gain you're getting out of the middle stage will have to improve the gain on the output or in improve your overall match or your overall noise figure. Uh, so there is a technique within ADS for doing that. Okay. Okay, great. Um, is the simulation capable of showing lower frequency oscillations if your matching structure create if your matching structures create actual oscillations? Yes, it is. Okay. It is actually able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, this was a, a gas device, um, but the question asked what, what dielectric material was used for the design? Uh, the dielectric was gallium arsenate. Um, and then depending upon what um, different oxides you have on there, if you were to look in the design kit that's supplied by Triquint, you would see each, see each dielectric layer. You would see its electrical properties, its thicknesses, and so on. So in this case, 12.9 for the gas. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember the oxides. Maybe mm -hmm. Ken knows them. Uh, the silicon nitride on there, I believe, is uh, about 2.9, maybe it's even higher than that. Okay, great. Uh, next question asks how you would model the uh, bond wires in an ADS simulation. Uh, if I was going to be modeling bond wires, I have multiple ways of doing it. I can use some built-in uh, empirical models within the schematic environment. If I'm wanting more accurate representations of it, I would be able to go to 
also integrated within the ADS environment. And let me see if I can sh have an example showing this somewhere. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid I don't. Um, so the same way I call momentum within ADS, I can also call a finite element engine. And we have some built-in macros for generating bond wire models. So you generate a bond wire. Actually, in this layout, you'd be able to uh, visualize uh, a 3D representation and see the bond wire, see their place in the right spot. And you'd be able to run a finite element method on the bond wire or the section of metalization around it you were interested in. OK, great. Um, we are getting close to the end. Um, let's see if we can pick a couple more. Um, uh, did you measure the noise figure and the 1 dB compression point? Um, we were working on measuring the, the compression point. That was the last thing we were working on. And we had we were trying to do a relative cal on the p and and it just wasn't working for us. So we're going to have to go back and get some power meters and actually do a compression test. Uh, so, like I said, I this is an ongoing project. Uh, I think if you're interested, we can, we're can we going to be updating uh, the presentation material as we get more measurements done. Okay, great. And, and maybe we'll make this the last one. I saw that you specified both single ports and internal ports in your EM simulation, and I know why. Um, so, it, and an internal port is one that I can't calibrate, and by calibration, uh, my edge ports are calibrated ports. Actually, go through a TRL type calibration in the simulation itself, and they're assuming that I have a plane wave or a TEM type wave going into the structure. When I'm using an internal port, I'm really exciting right at that point, and I'm having some fringing coming out um, uh, due to the current expanding out on that particular structure. Uh, I. To do the calibration, you actually physically have to put that length into the simulation. And if you run into something else, uh, because of the way it's laid out, you can't do that. So you use internal ports, uh, knowing that in most of these cases where I do have the internal ports, there's a lot going on with the current there, so I'm not getting a, a clean TEM wave or quasi-TEM wave to begin with, uh, and it proves to be fairly accurate. Okay. Okay. And I'll make this the last one, non-technical question. Um, you might not answer directly, but at least tell people where to go. They're asking, what is the price range for ADS 2009? Uh, I'm going to let Joe Sadova handle that one. Okay. Is Joe on the line? Oh. <laughs> Joe might not be on the line. Okay. Um, so there, I, I'm not a, I'm a sales. I'm, I'm not a sales engineer. Uh, but if you contact them, they have all kinds of deals that they can work out with you depending upon your uh, existing customer or past customer um, or a new customer. But the EDA product line that they have probably goes anywhere from a few thousand to a hundred thousand dollars. So it's really hard without understanding what you want to do. And some of our systems include test equipment and can get very expensive. Right. Well, that sounds like the right answer. Go contact the salespeople. So, Michael, great job. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank our audience for some really wonderful questions, and I hope they uh, got a lot out of it. And once again, the uh, URL that is shown up on the screen right now uh, will take you to a special survey that uh, Aslan and Franklin have put together uh, in order to get your feedback and provide better service and support to you.